It's 104.9 Coyote Country. Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you. Is this Beth Van Dyne? Beth Van Dyne. Oh my gosh, it's, it's my mayor. My mayor's here. <laughs> you're always going to be mayor to me, um, and um, of course you're not. <laughs> but, I, think um, once, I think once you're, you're, you're mayor once, you can continue to be all that title, right? Oh, I, I would think so. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, presidents get to be called presidents, right? Yes, exactly. So yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for uh, for letting me talk to you today. This is uh, so exciting. We tried to hook up last week, but um, due to your busy schedule and our weather dilemma, where we got kicked off, you know, in Southwest Texas, it doesn't snow often. Apparently, it hasn't snowed in the thirty years I was gone from this city, and when I came back, it decided to snow. So, wow. You know where I was last week? Oh, where were you? I was in Corpus Christi. Oh, okay. Yep. I woke up on Friday, and, you know, palm trees are full of snow. <laughs> Man, what, what a crazy turn of events, right? It was wild. It was wild. Well, well, for those who don't know who's on the phone, um, mayor, well, former mayor of Irving, Texas, Beth Van Dyne, elected uh, mayor of Irving in 2011. You ran a successful campaign for re-election, and now you're part of the Trump administration as a recently appointed regional housing and urban development uh, administrator. Did I get all that right? Yeah. Is mayor such a shorter title? I know, right? Thanks to the point, right? You know what that does. Yeah, you, you, you wear a cool hat and a monocle, and you tell everybody what to do. <laughs> But you now, in the Trump administration, what exactly do you do for HUD? Because I've kind of always wondered, I kind of have an idea, but um, why, don't you, why don't you tell me what you're doing over there? Well, you know, I think uh, the, the um, assumption that a lot of people have is that the only thing that we do is work on public housing. The fact is, is there's so much more. We're, we're trying to uh, help cities, you know, with economic development opportunities, um, looking at looking at housing as um, a need for a community and how to help them, you know, build their uh, cities around that need. But, you know, we don't own, we don't own properties. We don't, we don't own public housing. We just kind of act as coordinators uh, to try to help them help themselves and help those who most need it in their communities. So my focus the last few months, um, not surprisingly, has been on uh, Hurricane Harvey. And uh, helping right. those cities and those communities to come up with their plans of recovery and rebuilding. And and how has that come along? Do you feel like you, like you guys are making some good steady progress? Well, I tell you, you know, from being in the mayor's mayor seat for so long, um, I, I, I'm really able to be be sensitive to their needs. And the fact is, is that what a lot of these communities need right now is a plan moving forward. I mean, when when you have your housing um, um, market just devastated, when you've got your infrastructure knocked out, when you're trying to figure out what the next steps are, it can be daunting. And in, in looking at all of the available resources and trying to figure out which ones make sense for your community and which ones that, that you can apply for and which ones you're going to get kicked out for, it really, it's a maze. And what we're trying to do is, is help coordinate all of these outside activities from, you know, from FEMA, from HUD, from HHS, from SBA, and, and figure out how to coordinate that with what the state offers. And we're, we have put together these teams. That, that's actually why I was in Corpus, because we were meeting with the Aransas County folks. And all sitting together in a room and knocking out, what are your priorities, where are your challenges, and what are your goals long term, and how can we help you to get there? It's not just writing a check, but it's giving them some solid foundations that they can build on and they can leverage the available resources to what they already have to be able to recover in the most effective manner. And that's what we're trying to do right now. Well, I know from your... um from your service in the city of Irving, where I, where I resided for many years. Uh, I know that you are all about transparency. I've seen video of you at uh, city council meetings and whatnot, so I know that uh, what you're doing, you're putting out there in the public, and uh, I have total faith that you are doing a fine job alongside uh, Ben Carson. How's that working with that gentleman? Secretary Carson is, he is absolutely an amazing, amazing individual. He is, he is sharp. He is um, very thoughtful, and uh, he's got, you've got somebody who's grown up in projects and he has has seen what happens when you work really hard and and how having those kind of mentor relationships and opportunities to get out of a a bad situation to make it better to really achieve he's great to work with he's great to work with i appreciate you uh you appreciate you bringing him up uh he was one of the reasons he was he was the main reason why i took this job
Well, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. It's been great watching you as my former mayor and then getting into the headlines. And let's let's go over this real quick. Just I would not be a good I guess this wouldn't be a, a good interview if I didn't bring this up. Uh, people may recall you and the city of Irving in the headlines from that MacArthur High School student uh, who was detained by police back in 2015. He made a homemade clock, uh, brought it to school, mistaken as a bomb. Um, can you give us a little background on those events and how your political life uh, and possibly maybe even your personal life has changed since then? Because I know that was being a resident in your city. Uh, you know, you are my mayor when all that went down that school was two miles away from my house uh and I, it, it was it was a big in my opinion as a resident just a big stain on the city i think that a lot of people painted us in a in a bad light and if you wouldn't mind g- give me your two cents on that because i've really never had a chance to talk to you about that oh yeah i think it's amazing when you've got a media that has a very specific agenda and they don't care who they throw under the bus to be able to sell papers that was all about. Nobody was really interested from a media perspective on the truth. He had one reporter who wrote a nasty story, again, not based on the truth, and other other papers just picked it up, and people, based on one reporter's um, um, thoughts on, on the subject, just went to town and all of a sudden made all sorts of radical assumptions on an entire city. You know, we're one of the hundred top, you know, largest cities in the country. We're we're home to six Fortune 500 companies, and to think you know, we also have the most diverse zip code in the country. Right. Yeah. And the the things, the assumptions that people made, the labels that they threw out were absolutely ridiculous. You had a you had a teenager who brought what looked like a bomb to school, and he got questioned about it. And I think if your child was at that school, I know if my child was at that school, I would have wanted somebody to ask some questions because, God forbid, it was a bomb and any kid got hurt. You know, there would be other questions to be asked. And I think it got totally thrown out of proportion. And, you know, that, that is just what happens when you've got people who, instead of having an, a normal conversation, have to to create these stories to sell papers. You know, you mentioned, uh, well, we're talking, first of all, to um, Beth Van Dyne from the uh, Housing and Urban Development uh, Administration, former mayor of Irving, Texas. Uh, during that whole fiasco, I mean, you mentioned, uh, you know, if your kid was in school, my daughter would literally be going to that school in two years, uh, in that high school. So, yeah, absolutely. As a parent, I was like, duh, this is, you know, this is just... It's cut and dry. It's black and white, man. Question the kid. You know, tell him it's inappropriate. Send send him home, or you know, talk to his parents. I I thought the uh, whole thing got blown out of proportion. It was it was really sad to, to watch. But it'd be the, so much more dramatic to make it seem like it was some kind of a of a you know a, of a hateful thing, and it, it couldn't have been anything more. It, it was simply a student brought something in that looked like a bomb, and he was questioned on it, and that was it. But in today's PC culture, you know, we are we're, we're constantly looking to be offended. Um, instead of looking at common sense, it's it's a shame. I, and I really hope that we're going to get over that soon. Well, yeah, and it's no secret you've been fighting the PC police for, for some time now. Uh, you, you took your stance against uh, Sharia law. Uh, and then, of course, that now this is just something that's kind of relevant, I think. Um, because here in 2017, there has been endless cases of sexual harassment allegations, uh, both in Hollywood and in Washington. Um, as a female politician, I'm sure you've got a take on this. Do you want to share any of your thoughts on how all this is playing out? You know, when I first got elected mayor, I went to a U.S. Conference of Mayors um, event, and we had female uh, mayors. And actually, a number of us at the table were, you know, in Irving, I was the first mayor. I was the first woman to ever be elected mayor in my city. And there was a number of us at this table. And you had some who complained about how bad it was to be a woman and how we were discriminated against. But I'll tell you, um, there was a number of us who stood up and said, I don't think there's ever been a better time to be a female and and to be in a position of authority or power. It, It can be very disarming to some, which is not necessarily a bad thing. But I have never put out there that I should be elected or supported because I'm a woman. I look at myself if I want to be treated as an equal and as every bit as um, um, powerful as a man, I need to put myself out there like that and act like that. I refuse to buy into this victim mentality. Um, I have control over my future. I've got power when I'm in a room, and I have power because I am prepared, because I believe in being outspoken. I'm consistent, and... I think 
you need to, to support that in women. And I have always, I mentor a number of different women. I, I, you know, we started an entrepreneurial center in Irving that was a focus on women-owned businesses. Um, I worked in like crisis when I was in college. So this is something, I mean, I wrote my honors dissertation focused on uh, victim mentality versus survivor mentality. And to see this all coming full circle 25 years later is really kind of shocking. But, you know, as, as a woman, we need to lead and never fall into that victim mentality. Well, I am so excited to hear this. It's such a refreshing uh, perspective, and it's so great to see a strong um, female conservative politician as yourself saying these words. Uh, my daughter, who's now 11 years old, you know Cadence. Your daughter's awesome, by the way. I love, I love seeing what you guys do together. It is, it is so uplifting to see that kind of a relationship between a father and his daughter. It's awesome. How is she doing? She is great. She just had her um, school Christmas concert a couple of nights ago at her school, her new school. Uh, she's settling in really well. Although, you know, she's a little upset because she can't campaign for you anymore. So <laughs> <laughs> She's like, when are we going to put up yard signs, Dad? When can I wear my Beth shirt? I'm like, um, she's moved on. She's, she's over there hanging out with Trump now. So... <laughs> No, that's so good to hear. And, and you're right. And, and I believe that your daughter will be able to accomplish anything she puts her mind to. Well, well, I, I'm so glad that she's got great examples like you, uh, you know, out there in, in this politically crazy, frenzied world we're living in now. So thank you very much for what you do. Um, how can we help you? You mentioned the, the, the Harvey um, uh, victims and, and all that situation. How can the average Joe help out um, as far as your department goes? What, what can we do? Um, as far as my department goes, uh, we have we're working with a number of different agencies, um, including Red Cross. Um, they are at the table when we have our our interagency meetings, and there's a lot of things that people can do. And I think when you look at at, at the response from Texas versus what happened after Katrina, um, it, it, the 90 percent of of those people who were saved in the days after the hurricane. We're saved by private individuals, not by the government. Right. And we have that mentality in Texas. It's like, hey, we got this. Very self-sufficient, very self-reliant, and, and, and we will recover. That being said, folks right now are in need of, especially as the cold weather comes, in need of things like blankets, coats, Christmas coming up. We're working what we can do to try to get as many people housed as possible before the end of the year. Um. But donations are, are, are very much uh, appreciated um, all around. And, and like I said, Red Cross is one of the groups that we're working with, and they do some phenomenal work. Okay, well, there, there's a great idea, suggestion for uh, this holiday season. Get on out to your local Red Cross and uh, donate some of those items that uh, Beth just uh, mentioned. Thank you so much for calling on the show. It's, it's so and happy ex- birthday, by the way. Yeah. Thank you. I, yeah, I know it's, I, I've been doing like this belated birthday thing all week long since we were knocked off the air on my actual birthday. So, uh, so thank you so much for that. I, I'm so honored to have you on my show. You know, out here in Uvalde, uh, it's just so great to talk to uh, a nationally celebrated politician such as yourself. So, thank you so much. Well, we appreciate all the work that you did in Irving, and I tell you right now that community is really missing you. Well, I really miss it too because they had some pretty good sushi out there. <laughs> Yeah, they do. Well, once again, let's give it up to uh, former mayor of Irving, Texas, Beth Van Dyne. Now, of course, recently appointed to the Regional Housing and Urban Development. It's so cool talking to you. Thank you so much for checking in. Okay, I'll let you go. I know you're so busy. Definitely. You give your, your daughter a big hug for me, and you take care. I'll talk to you soon. It's 104.9 Coyote Country.